12.3 Tangent Lines and Velocity Tangent Lines. In Lesson 1-4, you calculated the average rate of change between two points on the graph of a nonlinear function by finding the slope of the secant line through these points. In this lesson, we develop a way to find the slope of such functions at one instant or point on the graph. The graphs below show successively better approximations of the slope of y equals x squared at 1, 1 using secant lines. So we have three graphs, and we have two, we have, well, we have two points, but one secant line going through those two points. And we want to work our way to a tangent line at the point 1, 1. So we can take two points, and we can make those two points get closer and closer and closer to 1, 1. So eventually, uh, it becomes the same point. So if uh, we have 3, 9, the slope would be 4. If we have 2, 4, the slope would be 3. And if we have uh, 1.1 and 1.21, which is really close to 1, 1, the slope is 2.1. Notice as the rightmost point moves closer and closer to 1, 1, the secant line proves a better linear approximation of the curve near the point. So when the two points get closer and closer together, it's getting closer and closer to being the actual slope of the actual tangent line. And, and a tangent line uh, touches the curve at one and only one point. We call the best of these linear approximations the tangent line to the graph at 1, 1. The slope of this line represents a rate of change in the slope of the curve at that instant. To define each of these terms more precisely, we use limits. To define the slope of the tangent line to y equals f of x at the point x and then f of x, find the slope of the secant line through this point and one other point on the curve. Let the x coordinate of the second point be x plus h, where h is really small, yeah, for some small value of h. The corresponding y coordinate for this point is then f of x plus h. So if x is 2 and h is 0.1, then x would be 2.1, and then we'd have f of 2.1 would be the y value. So that'd be the f of x plus h. x would be 2, h would be very close to um, close to 2, or, or 0.1 away, as shown in figure 12, 3, 4. The slope of the secant line through these two, point, uh, these two points is given by, uh, that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But notice the x2 and x1 will always be the same. We'll have x minus x, that cancels out just to leave h. This, ex this expression is called the difference quotient. This right here, actually this one. They both are, but this is the, the simplified version. This is called the difference quotient. As the second point approaches the first, or as h approaches 0, so as the distance from x to uh, the, the second point, uh, so from x to this second point, as this h gets smaller and smaller, uh, the secant line approaches the tangent line as x f of x. We define the slope of the tangent line at x, which represents the instantaneous rate of change of the function at that point by finding the limits of the slopes of the secant line as h approaches 0. The instantaneous rate of change of the graph of f of x at point x f of x is the slope m of the tangent line at x f of x given by the slope is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, provided the limit exists. Find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of y equals x squared at 1, 1. Uh, we have the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. So we're going to plug x plus h in for this function, and so we'll have to square that. So we have x plus h squared minus f of x, f of x is x squared, and then all over h. And now we're going to try to simplify as much as we can. We have the limit as h approaches 0 of x squared plus 2 to hx plus h squared, and then minus x squared. So we're foiling out x plus h squared all over h. Now that's equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of, well, the x squareds are going to cancel. So we have 2hx plus h squared all over h. And we can factor an h out of the top and then cancel that one with the one in the bottom. That's the limit 
as h approaches zero of two x plus h because uh, one h will cancel from each of these. Well, now we can actually plug zero in. Plug zero in for h, we get two x plus zero, and that is two x. Now we're gonna evaluate that at x equals one. Uh, because we have the point one, one, we, we grab the x, because it says two times x. So two times one, the slope of the tangent line uh, at the point one, one is two. So now we could actually, it says find the slope of the line. So we've done our job. We found the slope. Well, we could continue on. The, the line, the equation of the line, is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Where the y1 is 1, so y minus 1, equals 2 times x minus 1. The x is 1 also. That's y equals, uh, or actually minus 1, 2x minus 2, so we have y equals 2x, add 1, we have minus 1. Let's graph the, the original equation, y equals x squared, so we've got a y equals uh, x squared. And then if we graph this line, that should be the tangent line at the point 1, 1. 2x minus 1. Now when we graph this, we're going to get a parabola. There's a parabola. And then there's the line that touches one time at the point 1, 1. This is called the tangent line. Slope of a graph at any point. Find an equation for the slope of the graph of y equals 4 over x at any point. So we're going to find uh, the slope of the tangent line that we, we can calculate the slope of the tangent line no matter what x value we pick. We have the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, which is 4 over x plus h, minus f of x, which is 4 over x, all over h. And uh, so now we need common denominator on the top, or, or we could just do x times x plus h. We could multiply all three of these times x times x plus h. We have the limit as h approaches 0 of... On the first one, the x plus h's will cancel, and we're left with 4x. On the second one, the x's cancel, and we'll be left with 4 times x plus h. And then when we use x times x plus h for the third time, we'll get h times x times x plus h in the denominator. On the top, we can distribute. We'll have the limit as h approaches 0 of 4x minus 4x minus 4h all over hx, x plus h. On the top, the four x's will cancel each other out. We have the limit as h approaches zero of negative four h over h times x times x plus h. And now the h's cancel. And we have the limit as h approaches zero of negative four over x times x plus h. And now we can actually plug 0 in for h. We have negative 4 over x times x plus 0. So in the denominator, we'll have x squared. Now that's the formula to find the slope of the tangent line to the curve at any point that we would want to pick. If position is given as a function of time, f of t, for any two points in time a and b, the average velocity v is given by... The average velocity is a change in the distance over the change in time, like miles per hour. The distance in miles that a runner competing in the Boston Marathon has traveled after a certain time t in hours can be found by f of t equals negative 1.3t squared plus 12t. What was the runner's velocity, average velocity between the second and third hour of the race? Uh, so we're looking at an x or t value of 2 to a t value of 3. So we want f of 3 minus f of 2 over 3 minus 2, and that's average velocity. So let's take a negative 1.3 times 3 squared uh, plus 12 times 3. There's f of 3, and then we need minus negative 1.3 times uh, 2 squared, and then uh, plus 12 times 2. And that's going to be all over, I guess I didn't really have to write this, 3 minus 2, which is 1. So let's plug that into the calculator. 
we have negative 1.3, let's send this to point, point 0.3 times 9 plus 36, and then we're going to minus, let's put this in parentheses, negative 1.3 times 4 plus 24. And we get 5.5. .5. And that's going to be, what was, uh, does it give any kind of, uh, uh, no, it doesn't give miles per hour or anything like that. So we'll call that good. Looking more closely at example three, we can see that the velocity was found by calculating the slope of the secant line that connects two points, two 18.8 and three 24.3 as shown in the graph. So here are, there's the two points. And the average velocity is going to be the slope of that secant line. The velocity that was calculated is the average velocity traveled by the runner over a period of time and does not represent the instantaneous velocity, the velocity or speed the runner achieved at a specific point in time. So this is average velocity. It's the velocity uh, that uh, he had over time. It's not saying uh, this runner was running 5.5 at any specific moment. To find the actual velocity of a runner at a specific time t, we find the instantaneous rate of change of the graph of f of t at t. If the distance an object travels is given as a function of time, f of t, then the instantaneous velocity, v of t at time t, is given by, well, this is the equation for uh, the slope of a tangent line, provided the limit exists. So if you want average velocity, no problem. We, we know how to do that. But now the new one is instantaneous velocity. What's the exact velocity at time t equals 2? We can find that out by calculating the slope of the tangent line. Instantaneous velocity at a point. A baseball is dropped from the top of a building 2,000 feet above the ground. The height of the baseball in feet after t seconds is given by this function. Find the instantaneous velocity v of t of the baseball at 5 seconds. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2,000 minus 16 times 5 plus h squared, because we're doing this at 5 seconds, minus f of x, or minus 2,000, minus 16 times 5 squared. And that's going to be all over h, all over h. So that's going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of 2,000 minus 16 times 25 plus 10h, uh, yeah, 10h plus h squared, and then minus 2,000. And then we could have plus, let's take uh, 16 times 25 which is 400, 400. Well, that's the limit as h approaches zero of 2,000 minus, well, 16 times 25 was 400. Uh, then we have minus uh, 160h, and then minus 16h squared, minus 2,000, and plus 400. And that is all over h. That's going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of, let's see, the 2,000s are going to cancel out. Negative 400 and 400 cancel out, cancels out. So we're left with negative 160h minus 60, let's do this, minus 16h squared all over h. Well, now I can factor out an h on top and cancel with the one on the bottom. Uh, so that's going to be negative 160 minus 16h, we can plug the zero in for h. It's gonna make that piece zero. So we have a negative 160. The distance a particle moves along a path is given by s of t, where t is given in seconds and the distance of the particle from its starting point is given in centimeters. Find the equation for the instantaneous velocity v of t of the particle at any point in time. We have the limit as h approaches 0 of, let's see, 18 times t plus h minus 3 times t plus h to the third minus 1. And that's minus 18t minus 3t to the third minus 1. So there's f of t plus h minus f of t 
and that's all over h, all over h. Uh, that's going to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of 18t plus 18h, then minus 3 times, uh, we're going to have t to the third uh, plus 3t squared h plus 3th squared, and then plus h to the third, minus 1, minus 18t, plus 3t to the third, and then plus 1. And that is all over h again, all over h. Let's distribute and cancel at the same time. Limit as h approaches 0. Let's see, we should have an 18t and an 18t. Those should cancel out. We have a negative one and a positive one. So we've canceled all we can so far. Let's, let's distribute now. We have 18h minus 3t to the third minus 9t squared h minus 9th squared and then minus 3h to the third. And that is all over, all over. Oh, we have the plus 3t to the third right, right there. Almost missed that one right there. Uh, over h, the limit as h approaches 0 of, do we have anything that cancels? We do. Negative 3t to the third and positive 3t to the third. So we're left with 18h minus 9t squared h minus 9th squared minus 3h to the third, and then all over h. Well, everybody has an h, so we can cancel 1 from everybody. We're left with 18 minus 9t squared minus 9th, then minus 3h squared. And we can plug 0 in for h now, which leaves 18 minus 9t squared.